So excited to be here this morning. Um, so two years ago, I'll tell you how this um, sermon was birthed two years ago. Um, I was on the stage and I was giving, uh, I was preaching on uh, greater growth or something like that. I don't remember the message, but the Lord does. Amen. Uh, and I was giving this message and after that, after that uh, sermon, uh, I met a man. He wasn't from here, uh, but he met me in the back and he said that you would have never got the opportunity to do that at my old church. And uh, I looked at him. I don't know how my face was, um, but um, <laughs> I kind of uh, it kind of shocked me. He said, "You would you would never if you were at my church. You would never ever have the opportunity to do what you just did." And so, uh, as I'm looking at him, I was like, um, "Welcome to Elkhorn. I hope you had a great time at Elkhorn Baptist Church. We are a soul winning, life changing church, you know." Um, but that kind of that kind of put a for two years, I have not stood on this stage because of that one person. Uh, and uh, so this morning, if, if no one else gets the word, it's for me because God is positioning me to transition. God is about to do something new in my life. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you this morning that that man that stopped me, he, he's not here anymore, um, but... Um, I think he, I think he left after that. I want to, I want to encourage you, but Pastor Brian will be back next Sunday. Okay. So don't not come back. Okay. Cause that man has not been back for two years. I don't know where he went. Um, but that man after that sermon, I'm telling you, it crushed my spirits and I have not stood on this stage for two. I let a man dictate the purpose. And we cannot do that. And every time that I come up here, I feel like I have to speak to the spirit of tra tra tradition. I have to speak to the spirit of religion and allow the spirit of tradition and allow the spirit of religion know that you did not call me. I have to allow the spirit of tradition and I have to allow the spirit of religion know that Brian Keith Rafferty did not call me. God called me. God chose me. God placed his blood hand upon me. And so I don't know who that's for, but we cannot allow one person determine the trajectory of our life. I have not been on this stage for two years because of one man who is no longer here. So I allowed his oil. Well, he didn't have no oil, but I allowed uh, his mentality. I allowed his mentality to change the course of my purpose. I love y'all too. Now, <clears throat> let me get back. Now, our pastor, please come back. Please come back next Sunday, okay? I promise you, your pastor will be here. But if you are a fan of your pastor and not a follower of Jesus, something is wrong. All right. Whew. Okay. But I do want to honor my pastor. Uh, they are on vacation, uh, and I hope that they're having a great time. And uh, I know that they're watching. Uh, we didn't draw straws at staff to see who was uh, preaching. Uh, but uh, for the past two years, uh, Pastor Brian would come uh, in my office, and he'd be like, ditto, you're up. And I'd be like, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going on that stage. I, I was kicking and screaming this morning. I have been battling all week. I have been fighting the spirit uh, of what that man said to me for two years but I want to be free today. I want to be free today. And so I believe that the Lord is going to do something great and something mighty. But we honor our pastor and his family as they take that rest. Um, but he will be back next Sunday. So I won't be long today. Um, but I do believe that I have been placed on assignment to share this word with you. And this word is positioned to transition. Go ahead and look at your neighbor again and say position to transition. Luke 4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set, sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. In Isaiah 43, 19, it says, For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. 
And this is the main text that we're going to focus on today. But in Joshua 1, it says, Joshua then commanded the officers of Israel, go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days, you will cross the river and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you. Transition is defined as a process or period of time of changing from one state to another. Throughout the word, we see this process of transition take form. We find a man named Joseph who was transitioned from the pit to the palace. We see Elijah who was transitioned from student to prophet. We see Paul change from a persecutor to a preacher. We see Jesus coming from heaven to earth to show the way. We see him going from earth to the cross. My debts he did pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. It was all transition. Let me come on your road for a minute. When you ask Jesus into your heart, when you confessed him as Lord of your life, you, ma'am, you, sir, went from death to life. You went from old to new. You went from depressed to having a destiny. You went from empty to full. You went from having chains to breaking chains. You went from empty to full. You went from having chains to breaking chains. Come on, you went from having chains to breaking chains. Hallelujah. You went from bound up to being set free. There was a state of change and transformation that happened in your life. Somebody say change is good. Now, this is, what I want, this is what I want you to do, okay? I want you to look on your road. Now, if they have their arms crossed, okay, and they still got their nose up in the air, say, she was talking to you. <laughs> Go ahead, look at them. See if they got, still got their arms crossed. I just said that we went from having chains to breaking chains, and they still look like this. Still look like this. Don't look at them too. Just say she was talking to you, girl. She was talking to you. Life is full of moments that are constantly changing. Think about it. Childhood to adulthood. Apartments to dream houses. Single to married. From having kids of your own to now being grandparents of your life. You went from changing in seasons. Coach Reiner says if you, know, if you are in your 60s and 70s, you're in the fourth quarter of your life, right? Some of you went from, uh, I don't know why they used to call them hoopties. Now, y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, I was just making sure. Uh, like the old car, I don't know if it was a beat up car. My dad said he used to have a hoopty. I don't know what that is, but I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking that's not a very good car. But right now my dad's driving a nice SUV. So we're transitioning. Anybody have a hoopty? Anybody? Oh, praise the Lord, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you don't have no hoopty. <laughs> Amen. But we transition to something new. That, my friends, is called transition. In James 4, 14, it says, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. Another version says, your life is like a vapor. It's here a little while, then it's gone. I want to ask you a question today, church. How do you feel when you stand on the verge of reaching a long-awaited promise? Are you happy, sad, relieved that the journey is nearly over? Are you frightened of the tests and trials that still lie ahead? Or do you view your future with courage and faith in God? Before I go to Joshua 1, 10, 11, which is the strategy that, will be, that we will be using to transition, let's go back to Joshua 1, 5, 9. It won't be on the screens, but when you get home, read Joshua 1, 5 through 9. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people. You will lead South Central. You will lead the people at your job. You will lead the people at your school. You will lead the people at your church to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7 says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it from the right or to the left. That you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? 
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Forty years, the Israelites found themselves wandering in the wilderness. Joshua's assignment was to lead the people from a place of bondage to a place of blessing. Joshua was set apart to help transition the Israelites from a process of not knowing to being certain of who their God was. Can I remind you today that the same God that was with Moses is the same God that is with you? Can I remind you today that the same God that was with Joshua is the same God that is with you? The word says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Say this with me again. I'm positioned to transition. Now, have you ever been in a desert season? A season where everything is flipped upside down in your life. You have no idea where God is. Your friends are nowhere to be found. Things don't make sense. And God seems distant. Can you just, can you just show me your hands if you've ever been in a wilderness season? Hallelujah. In desert seasons, you can lose sight of your promise. In a desert season, you may get stuck in the familiar. You may get a little too comfortable with the new norm. Wilderness seasons oftentimes reveal who you really are and what you really serve. A.W. Tozer says that this we can never know who or what we are till we know at least something of what God is. I love the quote that says, not all storms come to, come to disrupt your life. Some storms come to clear the path. So when the Lord is trying to tr transition us from fear to faith, oftentimes he will shake up the ground of tradition. He will shake up the ground of religion. And he always points us back to faith, hope, and love. James 1, 2, 4 says, Consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I think about this past year and how many people have lost hope. I think about the people right now who are sitting at home, who are broken, who are discouraged, who are disappointed and living in disbelief. I wonder how many people in here today are having a Matthew 13, 15 moment. You know that scripture, a moment where your heart has become calloused. Um, uh, um, a Matthew 13, 15 moment that you can hardly hear with your ears. You have closed your eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes. See what? See miracles, signs, and wonders. Hear what? With their ears, the voice of the Lord. Understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. While in transition, you must guard your heart. What I want you to remember today, what I want to get in your spirit today, what I, if you don't get anything out of this sermon, I want you to know that we serve a God that never breaks a promise. He's never made a promise he couldn't keep because he's not a man that he should lie. God always keeps his promises. He has power to make and fulfill at the same moment every promise that he has ever spoken. Not only is he a way maker, not only is he a light in the, in the darkness, but my God is the ultimate promise keeper. God is about to do something new in our lives. I believe the Lord is transitioning the body of Christ. New wind is blowing, fresh fire is falling, and revival is here. Transition requires, here's the first point, if you're taking notes, preparation. Transition requires preparation. Transition requires preparation. God is preparing you. In Ezekiel 38, 7, it says, get ready, be prepared. First Peter 1, 13 says, therefore, preparing your minds for actions and being sober minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. If we are honest at one time or the other, we can say that we have complained about where God has us. Aaron, come up here. Aaron or Sadie, it doesn't matter. All right, so I have this luggage up here because I love illustrations, right? They're my favorite thing in the world. And, um, <clears throat> oh, there was a, okay. Did y'all, Pastor Joey, did y'all see like a little small bag? Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. This bag is going to represent purpose. Okay. Everybody say purpose. purpose. 
This bag is going to represent uh, us being about our father's business, okay? Not everybody else's business, not Facebook business, but our father's business, okay? All right. Now, so Aaron is going to hold this bag, uh, and he's going to transition from one spot to the other. So if you could take purpose and, uh, yeah, go to, to the other. Now, this is a man of God who uh, has went from one spot to the other transition. He made the transition from point A to point B. Now, obviously, he has purpose. He's about his father's business. He's in his word. He is being real with the Lord. He's being transparent. And th this is the point that I want you to get at is that God is looking for some people. God is looking for some vessels who are going to point them back to the cross. That God is looking for some people who are going to point them back to Jesus. We have to get back to a point in our lives where we are pursuing righteousness. We got to get back to a point in our life where we are pursuing humbleness. We got to get back to a point in our life where we are pursuing holiness. And so the Lord uh, allowed me to see this vision of, of some bags, okay? Now, he has purpose. He's about his father's business. Now, come back, <clears throat> and I want you to pick up that bag. Yep. Now, a majority of the time, what happens is, and you can uh, be comfortable. Here. There you go. All right. <clears throat> a majority of the time, what happens in transition Let's say Aaron, who represent all, he rep represents you guys, let's say that he is dealing with anger, okay? Somebody hurt him at the church. Somebody made him angry at the church. This is what happens, okay? This is what happens when we're in transition. We got purpose in one bag, but guess what? We start church hopping. So we take this bag and we go to another church. And this bag is representing anger, okay? Now, so he still has purpose and he still is about his father's business. But he took that bag from the church that he got hurt at and he brought it over to the other church. A majority of the time, what happens is when you do not deal with the season of transitions, you continue... Aaron, can you make just, a, just go around in circles like three times? A majority of the time, that's all you do. You're carrying purpose and you're carrying your anger and you're doing the same exact thing of what you did in that one church. And the Lord cannot bless that. The Lord is not going to bless that. Yes, you can still be used, but the Lord is not going to bless that because he's looking for people who are, who are wanting to be holy, who are wanting, you can stop, to be righteous, who are, who are wanting, who are wanting more of Jesus Christ. So we find ourselves going in circles, right? We picked up that bag of anger, went to another church, but the Lord's about to do something new. We say that today, right? Now, Aaron, I believe if you op open up that bag. A majority of the time... <clears throat> A majority of the time, when we go from place to place and we do not deal with our issues, okay? Right now, he's just focused on anger, right? He left the church because he was angry at, let's say, a deacon. Come on. Uh, he, he was mad at a deacon, hallelujah, and he went to another church. But guess what? He forgot that this bag was hidden. Oh, come on. Okay. All right. Uh, if y'all, okay. Um, okay. Can y'all do me a favor? Uh, let's ask Holy, Holy Spirit. Oh, come on. That wasn't everybody. Holy Spirit. Please reveal what I need to see in the spiritual so that I can experience something new. Okay, now let me do this again. Aaron picked up anger because he was mad. He plucked himself away from the church, went to somebody else's church. He opened up his anger, and now all of a sudden he finds something that was hidden. I'm telling you, this pandemic has exposed the real you. If anything else, the, this pandemic has exposed the real you. And so a majority of the time, we have no idea what we have hidden. Now, God knows, but a lot of people don't know what we have hidden. Man. I'm trying, Lord. Okay. A lot of people, a lot of people want the new things of God, but can't deal with the hidden things of themselves. God, I want something new. God, I want something more. You cannot get healed if you are not real. 
So now <clears throat> Aaron still has purpose. He's dealing with anger. And now all of a sudden he, uh, now all of a sudden he is dealing with something that has not been exposed yet. But everything in the dark is going to come to the light. All right. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pick up those bags and can you worship with those bags? Yeah, you can because you're strong. Yeah, there you go. All right. So this is what we look like. This is what we look like in worship, right? This is what we look like. Uh, we, are, we have our purpose in our hand. We are about our Father's business. When somebody says, how you doing? You say blessed and highly favored. You put a smile on your face, and we lift our hands, and we think that we are free, but whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. And if you have not experienced, if you have not dealt with anger, if you have not dealt with the things that are hidden, you look like this in the Spirit. All right, put that down. Come back. Can you pick up another bag? It don't matter. Let's do the backpack. Mm -hmm. All right. This this backpack uh, now does have stuff in it, right? It's a little heavy, right, Aaron? Okay. Right. Uh, So this backpack that he has on, we're going to say that that is the spirit of negativity. Okay. Spirit of negativity. Stay right here. Now, you're, no, no, you're fine. The Lord wants us, right, to go from one place to another, right? In the spiritual realm, okay? I have things that are hidden. I'm now angry. I'm now serving at another church with my anger and something that is hidden, and now I'm comfortable, right? How many of you sit in the same seat? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's try it again. How many of you sit in the same seat? And if somebody sit in your seat, you would be mad. Y'all, we're about to have an altar call. We are about to have an altar call in Jesus. How many of you sit in the same seat? Thank you. Thank you. There's no way you can't tell me that I sit in the same seat. It's just my seat. You know what I'm saying? And when someone, when, and so I'll, I'll get off that because y'all are looking at me like y'all are upset. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> this bag represents being comfortable, right? We sit in the same seat, right? We know who's sitting in our rows, right? Oftentimes, the Lord will make you uncomfortable to know, to make you know that it's him. It would be uncomfortable. So, so a majority of the time, what happens uh, when I'm in settings like this, I'll be like, give God your best praise or start praying in the spirit. And that makes people uncomfortable. Why? Because we're okay if we're comfortable. We're okay if, if we're comfortable. It's comfortable in here today. We sit in the same seat. It's very hard to say I sit in the same seat, right? It's very hard to do that. Why is that? It makes us uncomfortable. People don't like being uncomfortable. But I'm telling you, in these latter days, we are going to have to get uncomfortable. You might have to do something that you are not called to do. To experience everything that the Lord has for you. So not only... Not only is he angry, not only is he still packing purpose and trying to get from one point to the other, not only does he have hidden agendas or things that have not been exposed, not only is he uncomfortable, but let's go ahead and, uh, can you take this too? Somebody shout out a word. What is it? Oh, glory. Okay. Uh, What? Stress? What? What? Jealousy. Okay, let's go there. Let's go with jealousy. Let's go with Jesus. Let's go with jealousy. Okay. So now Aaron, who represents you, is jealous of the calling that's on my life. Now, all of a sudden, Aaron is jealous of the call that's on your life. He don't understand why, why you can sing better than him. Now he wants to be on the platform. And all of a sudden he finds himself in a spirit of competition. Okay, we got to be very careful, especially in South Central Kentucky, with that spirit of competition. Because that spirit of competition will always hinder what Christ has for us. That spirit of competition, if you allow it, right, we are supposed to go get people who don't look like us. We are supposed to go get people who don't 
a smell like us. We are sub, if we are a life, uh, a soul winning, life changing church, right? Whatever the soul looks like, whatever that person looks like, it does not matter because, 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 because we have Jesus in our hearts. And when you have Jesus in your heart, it does not matter what church they go to. It does not matter what denomination they are. It does not matter. But I'm telling you, church, that that spirit of competition is going to hinder everything that the Lord wants to do. And so, so we still got purpose in our hand, though. <laughs> I can still go serve. I can still go serve. But that spirit, and it's pretty big. <laughs> it's pretty big here. That spirit of competition, it's huge here. So, Aaron, go ahead and go from one place to another. Now he still has purpose in his hand. Now I want you to worship. Go for it. Yep. Awesome. Now, that was easy for you, right? That probably wouldn't have been, if I asked Sadie to come up here, right? Uh, that wouldn't be easy for her. Uh, but you can put them down. So now we still look, we still look like this in worship. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, judgment. All right. Judgment, and then we'll, okay, unforgiveness. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I hear y'all. Okay, so we got uh, judgment. What y'all going through? We got gossip. We got, what else? <laughs> Unforgiveness. <laughs> okay. I don't. <laughs> All right. We got liars. Come on. We got liars. What else we got? Yeah, yeah. Doubt. What? Depression. Fear. Oh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh. Drop, oh, he dropped his purpose. Now, <clears throat> Aaron, can you pick all those bags up? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Sadie, come up here. Let me get back while he's picking that up. So God is preparing us. The strategy for change is all found in the command of Joshua 1, 10 and 11. <clears throat> Get your provisions ready. Now, oftentimes what happens, though. I know. Oftentimes what happens. I do too. All right. Perfect. Now, we, we are cheering for Aaron and not the things that we're carrying, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we need to bring those to the altar and lay them down, okay? <laughs> but oftentimes what happens is that someone will come along, and instead of taking them to the altar, we will help carry what they just bought in. <clears throat> so instead of, instead of rebuking and correcting with the Word of God, we place judgment on people, but we, we help carry what they just bought in when the Lord says, whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. And so we have the opportunity to help people who are carrying this stuff in their new to come and put them down at the altar. So if you are this person, if you are a Sadie in someone's life, I pray that you're not just going to help them carry jealousy. I hope that you're not just going to just help them carry negativity, but you're going to help them get back and, and, and allow them to drop their bags at the foot of the cross. Amen. It's very easy. It's very easy to help somebody carry their bags. It's another thing when you can speak life over that person and that person gets free. So the question of the day is, are you helping people carry their stuff or are you helping people get rid of their stuff? Y'all can leave those right there. Thank y'all. Give them a hand real fast. <clears throat> Go ahead and tell three people I'm transitioning. I'm positioning to transition. Transition. 
So we find in Joshua 1, 10, 11, it says, get your provisions ready, get your house in order, get what you need for where you are going, just like going on a trip. You can't wait to pack your clothes, right? I can't wait to get to my destination to pack my bag, right? Did, did y'all catch that? I cannot wait to get to Florida and then decide what I need. I mean, you can, but why not pack what, what you already have? right? We have the opportunity to get to destiny. We need to be prepared and go ahead and pack our bag. I absolutely love flying because it gets me fast to my destination, right? Uh, And I just pray in the spirit. I pray, we just ask that. We just ask Holy Spirit to allow us to see in the spirit. But when you are preparing for for, for destiny, when you are preparing to get from point A to point B, you have to prepare. God is preparing you. The greater the challenge, the greater the call. If you give me 10 more minutes, I promise I'll have you out. The greater the attack, the greater the assignment. Can I encourage you today that his grace is sufficient for you and his power is made perfect in your weakness. What is God preparing you for? He's preparing you for his purpose. He's preparing you for the call that's on your life. He's preparing you for that assignment that's on your job, even when that person gets on your nerves. The transition season needs you to take your position. That's number two. God is positioning you. In this season, we must stand on the word of God. God is positioning you. So not only is God preparing you, not only is God positioning you, He is also purging you. Now, this is a hard, this is hard. Purging season is hard, right? And so Psalms 57, 1, it says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be whiter than snow. A lot of times in life, <clears throat> praise him, y'all can actually come. You don't have to be long to be strong. Amen. Come on. Because I, f- I feel in the house that people want to lay some stuff down today. Amen. Amen. But <clears throat> purging season, right? When everything's stripped away. When, when the pandemic happened and everything was stripped away, right? We had the opportunity to prepare ourselves for God, what God wants to do in the next few months. Yeah. Right? We had an opportunity to go back in our homes, right, and fix our houses, but I don't think we did that. I think a lot of people are still in the state of carrying, right, everything like distraction, everything like a a bad attitude. I don't think we really asked God to purge us of us, right? God, I need you to purge me of my negative attitude. God, I need you to take away that bad mentality that I have. Our mindsets, our mindsets in the body of Christ, I think have to shift in this season. Because I know for a fact that the Lord is positioning us. I know for a fact that the Lord is preparing us. I also know that the Lord is purging us of us. And if we are not careful, we're going to miss the movement of God. In Joshua 1, let's do, um, let's do John 1, 11. Actually, no, no, no. Joshua 1, 10. Let's do that. Joshua 1, 10, it says, Joshua then commanded the officers of Israel, go through the camp, okay? Let's put a peg right there. Go through the land, okay? Go through South Central. Go through your job. Go back to your home, right? Then it says, tell the people to get their provisions ready. We need to get our provisions ready. We need to get our houses in order. Then it says, in three days, you will cross the river and take possession of the land. In three days, you will cross the Jordan and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you. In three days, you will cross the river and take possession of the land. If we believe what we believe, 
Bobby Gino, if we believe what we, what, we, what we believe, if we believe the word of God, like we say we do, we have the power, resurrection power at that, to take authority of the land that God has given us. Okay? And what I'm saying to you is that if we do not use that resurrection power and allow it to stay stagnant, if we allow it to not come forth, if we allow it to just sit, there are going to be lost souls who go to hell. We have the authority of Jesus Christ to take back. We have the authority to take back, possess the land. We have the authority to take back South Central Kentucky. Now, some of you are not excited about that because you don't want to be uncomfortable. And you can tell in churches that a lot of people don't want to see signs, miracles, and wonders because it's not comfortable. And it's going to cost you. Your calling will cost you. But I'm telling you, the strategy to go from one place to the next, to go from the old to the new, you have to possess the land. And we have the authority to do so. Stand all over this building. Go ahead. I'm not going to make you do anything crazy. That's the sermon. That's the word. Transition to position. Position to transition. God is ready to do something new in our lives. God is ready to take us from one state to the next. It is a process, right? Is there anybody in here that's been dealing with um, dizziness? Dizziness or motion sickness? Just out of the blue? Anybody? Can you come up here? Come on up. Dizziness, motion sickness? Amen. Amen. So two years ago, again, this man that spoke to me told me that I wasn't supposed to be on stage. I would never do that in his church. He lost. Well, he actually won because for two years, I did not. When Pastor Brian asked me, I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. But I refuse in these last days. I refuse in these last months. To suppress the Holy Spirit, to quench the Holy Spirit. I refuse to do that. So will you extend your hands to these beautiful young ladies who are dealing with dizziness and nauseousness? This should happen every Sunday where we should be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So sensitive to the Holy Spirit that we are able to possess the things that are attacking people. We are able to call things out that are not. We are able to speak life. So God, right now in the name of Jesus, we come against dizziness and nauseousness in Jesus' name. God, we pray right now for these beautiful ladies, God. I pray, Jesus, that as they go back to their seats, Lord Jesus, that they will feel your healing power, God. No more dizziness, no more nauseousness in Jesus' name. God, we are claiming healing by your stripes. They are healed by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb. They are healed. No more dizziness, no more nauseousness in Jesus' name. We do pray. All God's people said amen. Amen. You are being positioned. God is preparing you. But what's going to be uncomfortable is that purging season. When God starts to strip things away from your life. When God starts to take that bad attitude away. When God starts to expose the things that are hidden. So this is my favorite part is that we have the opportunity to drop bags at the feet of Jesus. So as Holly and the praise team, as they worship in this moment, and then I'll come back up. But I wanna pray for you. 
Maybe in here today, you don't know the Lord. And we want to celebrate with you. We want to celebrate with you today. So I pray in the name of Jesus, all hearts and minds are clear. Every, every eye closed in Jesus' name. God, I pray for this moment. I pray, Father God, that you send your people back to the altar. I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus that they, if they have things that are hidden, that you expose them. I pray, God, right now that if people have hidden agendas and we don't uh, place you to the forefront, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you allow people to experience you like never before. God, you cannot be explained. You have to be experienced. But your people have to take that first step. So today, God, I pray as worship goes forth, I pray, God, that you send your people back to your feet. I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus for that lost soul in here. Father God, I pray right now that if they are scared, if they are fearful, we come against that right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Father God, that they ask you into to your, to their heart, Lord. I pray right now, Lord God, that you give them a sign that if their heart's beating real fast, if their, heart, if their hands are a little sweaty, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they feel your presence. So the altar is open, people of God. And all God's people said amen. amen. Now I do pray. I pray as we go into this song that you lay it all at the altar. I pray that you're not like a Sadie and you want to help people carry their stuff, but you come and speak life. Come and speak life so that person can be free today. Amen.